about that guy calls himself James MK. Oh yeah. That motherfucker smokes two packs a day. I heard he's got his own show now. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's growing real fast. And now everybody's gonna be Everybody, uh, welcome to the. What are we up to, uh, Mr. Natus? 34. 34th episode of the On Blast show. Um, tonight, uh, we obviously have two uh, special guests coming on the show. Um, uh, one is uh, one guy who needs no introduction. He's uh, one of the more vocal people in the community. Uh, the Emperor of Emperors, um, EMP Triforce, and the other um, is just as polarizing and popular in the fighting game community, especially amongst the tournament organizers. Um, he is the CEO of CEOs. Mr. Jeb Bailey will be joining us tonight. Um, he said he would be running in around uh, 10, 15, 10, 30, which is uh, getting around the corner. Um, but, uh, you know, that's going to be in a little bit. So I figured we'd get <laughs> some stuff out of the way. Um, first thing I want to get out there is all OBS members that are getting hoodies. There's good news and there's bad news. The good news is you are getting a hoodie. But if you're a little man that takes a medium, unfortunately, you're taking a large. Um, my distributor ran out of mediums. I wouldn't have had them in time. And I didn't want you guys to not get them, um, especially um, for the Florida guys like Mr. Gross, uh, Big D. We know you ain't no medium. Um, and, uh, and Trey Pound, uh, who's an XL anyway. Um, basically, I just want to let you guys know that uh, it's large enough. Um, also, uh, I believe uh, I have a special one where all players, I don't care from what game uh, and what community you're in, um, on April 3rd, uh, the new youngest member of OBS, OBS Cohen, who is uh, a player in the community by the name of uh, Take Two Chance up in Canada, will be having a, uh, a baby boy, and we are going to be putting a shirt together for him, and we want to have it autographed by all top players that are out there, and we are going to uh, ship it up to the little guy, so uh, the day he's born, he will have that shirt. Um, also, uh, shout outs to uh, King Ray down in Florida and uh, the current youngest member, King Ray Jr. Um, both of them will be getting hoodies as well, so they are getting them to fit them, um, being that he's a youth. 
with that said, I'm going to let uh, Dark Natus take it over for a few minutes. And I am going to field a couple of things and reach out to uh, our, our particular guests. All right, what's up, guys? It's another edition of the show. Unfortunately, I won't be, I'll be able to stay on here that long because i got to be up at 4.30 in the morning. So I'm going to make the best I can over here. So uh, shout out to everybody who's on the stream. Uh, guys, remember, uh, tweet this out. Let everybody know the show is going down. This is going to be a very, very, very interesting show. Um, for all you guys have seen last week's show, uh, the week before that, and also saw L.A. Joe's stream uh, when Triforce was uh, uh, unchained. Uh, I mean, you know, you guys know what could be expected or what could happen, but we'll see what happens when everybody comes on here and how everything goes. Um, a quick uh, shout-out to uh, this weekend. We have a Winter Bowl coming up. Uh, good luck to all the players that's out there. I personally won't be attending there because, like I told a lot of people, uh, I don't know if everybody's aware, I recently went back to work after being out from injury for more than four months. So uh, I got to I gotta make that money, guys. So unfortunately, I won't be able to attend that. Um, shout out to all our you know, affiliate websites and stuff like that. You know, trip sessions, uh, Mortal Kombat United. Uh, Test Your Might, Arsenal Smack, MK Bible, Gamers Edge, uh, DB Mugen, MK Server, Video X Games, Amiga Method Gaming, Mortal Kombat Online, TRMK, Ultra Spec Cables, Combat Network, MKMP, uh, Mortal Kombat Universe, Empire Arcadia, Total Mortal Kombat, Pro PC Gaming, Emperor's Realm, and PutThatBack.org. So, guys, uh, when you have a chance, go down to the info section below. Follow all these guys. They're very cool people. Very good websites and stuff like that. Don't forget, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and like us on Facebook and follow the stream. Click the little follow button, guys. It all helps. Um, uh, as you guys know, I announced that last week. Uh, we did get offered a Twitch partnership. Uh, we are in the process of getting that taken care of. I was hoping to have that done by this week, but hopefully we have that done by next week. Um, also, we are filling field. We are looking through offers from a few different websites on YouTube for partnerships. Uh, we currently have uh, full screen looking into us right now. We, so we are in talks with them. Um, we are speaking with Machinima, and we are speaking with Userich uh, or Userich or something like that. So. What is that? A, what is that? A Jewish website? I, I don't know. I think I'm pronouncing the fucking goddamn thing wrong. So whatever the fuck, yeah, goddamn Shivitz, name. Yeah, Shivitz. I, I keep forgetting how to pronounce the damn thing. I yeah. Think. So we are in talk with all these guys and everything. So, uh, guys, like I said, please retweet out. Let people know show's going down. It's gonna be a very awesome show. And follow the stream. All right. Take it to you, game. All right. Um, I was just notified by uh, OBS uh, DJ El Toro. Um, for all you people that uh, that follow Kari Tagawa, um, and that's the Shang's army, and he's the gentleman who plays Shang Soon in the Legacy series. Um, his email, his Twitter account has been hacked. Who? Kari Tagawa. Oh shit, man! And, and his new his new Twitter. Is uh, Carrie H. Tagawa instead of what he had? Um, oh, that sucks, man. Yeah, yeah, well, that just goes to show you the stupidity of the community and why another reason why it don't grow. Um, I really don't think it was some random ass. Well, you know what? I'm gonna shut up. I'm not gonna guess. It could have been, you know, just him clicking a link on accident that just basically compromised it. Hey, hey James, can you type that in the stream so everybody can go yeah. to where and click it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Actually, somebody else already just did. Let me put it in there again. That really sucks, man. Come on, all people. Yeah, I know. Well, now we see in the dark side of the community. So, guys, there you go. I just threw it up in there. If you follow them, uh, be sure to uh, switch it up and uh, and uh, and follow that link and that Twitter account instead of the other one. Yes, I know German porn is much greater than Russian porn. I agree with you on that 100%. That shites their stuff. Anyway, um, let me see what else I need to, uh, to hit on quick. Um, obviously, everybody knows Winter Brawl is coming up this week. Um, should be pretty, uh, pretty intense. Uh, like I said last time, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to give away. 
um, should be pretty hype. Um, Evo points, trips to final round. Um, I'm drooling all over myself like a freaking clown. Um, um, of course, uh, VXG trips as well. Um, so it definitely uh, is going to be a uh, a great event this year. Um, and uh, with that said, um, I am going to uh, bring in the person that is going to be, we'll call him contestant number one. He is the CEO of CEOs, reigning in from uh, Orlando, Florida. He uh, is definitely uh, a... Uh, top tier player out there when it comes to uh, playing games as well as uh, organizing tournaments. He's done uh, CEO, he's done Winterfest, Cinco de Mayo. Um, it is uh, none other than uh, Mr. Jeb Bailey, so I will reach out to him. Hey guys, sorry for no video. My internet's going a little wonky right now, but uh, what's up? Not much, not much. I'm glad you uh, took the time. I'm sure you've gotten uh, a little heat from people uh, saying, you know, why come on this guy's show? He's out of his mind and all that other good stuff. But uh, I'm glad it shows that uh, you uh, you do uh, genuinely care about the community. I never had a doubt about that. Um, and basically what I want to do is I want to get uh, you to just introduce yourself because you know, maybe for some odd reason there are some people out there that might not exactly know who you are and what you do. Okay, uh, well first off my name is Alex Trebailey. Um I do run the CEO tournament down in Florida. Uh, I've been a gamer pretty much all my life. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome by the way. I am, I think I'm pretty decent at Street Fighter. I am Evo seated. <coughs> um, so uh, just yeah, I'm, I've been been in the community, the actual FGC, since I'd say about 2000, 2001, when CBS2 and Third Strike were there. Although not many people know, besides the Florida community, I was actually more into Mortal Kombat in the 90s. So when Champion Edition Street Fighter was out, I was playing Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, literally nonstop at the arcades. So I never really played Street Fighter until CBS2. Um, so I grew up actually from the Mortal Kombat. There wasn't really a community. There was just local arcades, obviously, because we didn't have internet and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, so that's it. That's my history in Mortal Kombat. I know your show is, you know, mostly from the Mortal Kombat community, but you have tried to reach out to other shows, uh, or, I'm sorry, other communities, and, uh, which is great, because I think every community needs to at least know a little bit about each other. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, that, that, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Currently, I still play when I have the time. I don't have much time anymore to play. Um, so I just I focus right now on hosting CEO and making it bigger and better every year. All right. Um, now, of course, the next guest I am going to bring in, you know, he, uh, we all know him. Um, he's one of the more vocal people of the community. Um, sometimes a little too vocal. Sometimes his choice of words could be uh, rash and harsh. Not that I, uh, I deviate far from that myself. Um, but uh, he does put himself on point with a lot of stuff and. I'm still trying to come to the conclusion of why there is such a, uh, a disdain at times for him um, when I view him as somebody that for the last 10, 15 years has done nothing but try to help uh, individual players grow. He's opened his door to people um, with no gain. Um, he's currently uh, the CEO of... Empire, reigning from New York City, and we will get him in right now. Martin. Uh, working. Um, can't say I'm complaining. Uh, I um, I I missed the cold to a, a weird sense. In a weird sense, I missed the cold of New York City, but I'm in, definitely enjoying the tropical weather out here. Doing some work, you know, getting on um, VXG. Um, you know, ready with Rolando and uh, pretty much just enjoying the island life. Well, until winter brawl, anyway. 
right. Now, for those of them out there who don't know you, just like I said with Jeff Bailey, uh, just give a brief description of who you are, what you're about, and then we will start getting into questions. Okay. Uh, well, pretty much everyone knows that um, I'm the founder of um, Empire Acadia. Uh, we're a development, development organization for the greater gaming community. Our job is to help uh, develop markets in the culture, community, and industry of gaming. We are not for the 13th year, not a sponsorship organization. Uh, that's been something that was labeled on us uh, when I used to come out of my pocket personally to help players and, or, and help our brand grow. And that has kind of stuck with us for a very long time and created a lot of mishaps and misunderstandings. But uh, ultimately, uh, we try to work with everybody in gaming globally um, to help the scene grow as a whole, not just fighting games, but video games in general. That's pretty much it. All right. Now, <coughs> I guess um, I would at least, you know, Mr. Jeff Bailey, Mr. Triforce, Mr. Triforce, Mr. Jeff Bailey, I guess formal hellos, I guess, would be Hey, bud. How's it going? Um, no, it's... Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm I'm just waiting for us to get into it. All right. Well, so what, man? Uh, I'm just on here to defend myself because I'm a bonehead. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you're more than a bonehead. Um, that toilet flushing sound you made. What's in the toilet's more what describes you. But uh, I, I'm on my good behavior right now. All right. Good. Good. Well, before Triforce and I actually do get into it, there is one thing I do want to say about. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago. This wasn't relating to Triforce. But um, just to defend my community, somebody was saying that a lot of other events get sabotaged in Florida. Um, whoever said that, uh, please feel free to message me so I could have a few words with you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I can briefly, you know, um, you know, people reach out to me nonstop. Um, I actually asked a couple of people that had mentioned something similar like, of, of that to me to come on. Um, I'm not going to say they chickened out, but we'll just say they chose to, to remain anonymous. Um, just to give you a brief rundown of what they were referring to, uh, I believe it's called the, it was the South Florida Challenge. And, you know, what, the, what these people were, were, were basically stating was that you favor Northern Florida over Southern Florida. And that, uh, you know, being that that was, I guess, down in Miami, I believe, that, uh, you know, it was just something that, you know, they were saying you hadn't come down, you know, you wouldn't, you were, you were less willing to come down to those events to show support um, and as far as promoting it. But at the same time, they were saying that you were more, more prone to promote site uh, tournaments up in, I believe, the Jacksonville area. You know, anything in North Florida. Right. Uh, that, I think I know what you're talking about. That actually doesn't sound so bad. The reason why I can never make it out to Miami is because I literally work six days a week. So I have one day off a week, which I don't even know until Friday, the day before. So I usually just go up to the northern tournaments because it's only like an hour and a half drive for me as opposed to four hours, which is no excuse because people drive six, eight hours to one of my one-day events. But um, I, I, I support everybody's event, man, but for some reason, and it's not a knock on South Florida, just a lot of people haven't been traveling there as much as they used to. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the venues down there, but... It's just, there's lots of reasons why people go to certain tournaments. It's mostly a trust thing. South Florida Challenge back in the early 2000s was actually a really big deal. It was all Florida really had. Um, so, but as me favoring other tournaments, that is definitely not true at all. I, I support every tournament in Florida. I do my best to. The ones I don't support are the people that come to me asking for advice. Hey, we want to do a tournament in Orlando. I'm like, okay, here's exactly what you should do. This is what's worked for me. And they do the exact opposite of everything I tell them, and then their event fails, and then they disappear. And I'm the one to blame because they fail, which is completely false. Just people don't realize that the events I run, I'm not talking the big event in June. Uh, like before CEO, the first one, I ran like 20 one-day events by myself with, of course, help and people showing up. But these were small events. CEO started from barely nothing. 
and I built him up so all these other people after CO became so huge like dude if this guy can bring all these people we can make money off this too and so they try to do the exact same thing I do but their way completely fails people lose trust in them and then they disappear so I can't help it as much as I'd love to go compete in everyone else's tournament which would take stress off me from running them I'd be happy as hell but people think it's a money maker it's not and they disappear and then they blame me because I'm the big dog now I mean you are the big dog and you know we could all we could all vouch for that when it comes to Florida uh, you know do you feel that you know being in that position as the big dog that you you I don't want to say you're obligated because you know what at the end of the day nobody's obligated to do nothing but pay their taxes and eventually die but you know <laughs> as far as the scene itself goes um, being that you are the big dog and you know let's be real Florida is your state you know I mean there's, there's other tournaments that are out there but when people talk about tournaments that are gonna happen down in Florida they talk CEO so you know as the the I guess we could call you the head honcho as far as the tournament organizers like you said people have reached out to you for advice do you find it that you should really you know I understand you work six days a week you know I'm in the same the same ballpark uh, to take that little extra initiative to try and help bring that scene up even though you know you know let's be real sometimes you just look at things and you go you know I'm just I'm just wasting my time I mean I've done it too but you know you keep trying to you know pound the stone and hopefully get it to you know sink into the heads that this is what you've got to do to make it work um, do you feel any sense of obligation that you should have to try and help bring these the South Florida scene up uh, I mean, I, I do feel obligation because I just want every event to be a success, whether it's in Florida or anywhere else. Um, but I mean, I just, I can't do everything by myself. That's what people, most people understand. I've actually had this debate is like, am I really, you know, is it me or nothing around here? And, and there's actually other great events. There's Tampa, Florida run by Tong. He's a guy who owned a, a play and trade. Now he runs, you know, Tampa's biggest events. Then you have Northern Florida. Just Miami, uh, you know, I mean, Miami, believe it or not, has the best players, hands down. Um, be, well, Flash Metroid actually moved to Orlando, so now we have one of the best players. Uh, it's kind of like the NBA trade-offs. But um, I shouldn't be obligated because I'm doing what I'm, I'm doing for my area here. I can't be everywhere at once. I don't have time. But anybody that ever asks for my advice on hosting an event, I give it to them. I used to write articles on how to set up an event, how to do this. And people ask me all the time, but just some people, they come in going, yo, there's all these kids playing games. We can make money off of that. And then they fail, and then it comes back to me because I'm so big and bad that they can never compete with me. When It's, it's, it's just not the case. They're just not working hard, and they think it's going to be a success in one day. It's, it's impossible. CEO was not built in one day. It was built over three years. You know, so um, but I'm good. I, I try my best to help, man, but some people, like I said, I give them exactly what they do. Like, for an example, the biggest mistake, um, and I'm not trying to be mean about certain people, I'm not naming names, but some people come in and run an event and they charge a venue fee higher than what I would charge. That's like the biggest mistake you can make when I've been doing this so many years, people trust me, they're not going to go pay somebody else more money for an event that they have no idea about. So that's one big deal that I try to set a standard in Florida that you should not be charging more than me when I'm the big dog. You know, you need to charge less like I used to and build it up from there. So, you know, it's not my responsibility to make sure everyone's event is big, but I do my best to help. And if they run with the advice, it usually works out. If they don't, they disappear and then it's back to me again. And, you know, I have no choice but to just keep doing my own event. All right. I mean, now let me ask, I got a couple of questions. I mean, I pretty much prepped a couple of true and false questions for you because, you know, like I said, I'm glad you've come on. And, you know, these are questions that, you know, are always uh, sitting in my head as far as looking at the scene. And, you know, we briefly spoke today a little earlier about, you know, what I think, you know, the end game has to be. Um, for the fighting game community actually to finally become a fighting game community because as fractured as it is, you know, at the end of the day, it really is a Capcom community, a Marvel community, a Smash community. You know, nobody, you know, I had mentioned, you know, last week that it's the only community that I know blacks, whites, green, blues, gays, transgenders, and heterosexual people have no issues hanging out with each other. But
The minute you say, oh, I play Mortal Kombat, you, oh, you're ass. You know, it's like this, this stupidity um, which comes from the top players, you know, and if the top players don't like it, you know, pardon my French, you can suck my dick. I, you know, it's, it, the fact of the matter is these top players, you know, have a responsibility. If they're here just to make a couple of bucks, all right, then you know what? That's, that's, at least I know where your prerogative is. But if you're somebody that's claiming to want this community to, to grow and, you know, this esports thing to actually catch on, these people actually really do got to step up to the plate, as do tournament organizers, as do podcast people, um, you know, anybody out there. So what my first question to you is, uh, in the terms of uh, the gaming scene, you know, is Florida part of the East Coast? <laughs> Depends who you're asking. If you're asking me, geographically, yes, we're a part of the East Coast. Traditional terms, we're not a part of the East Coast. Florida has always been its own black shit. And I'm, being, I'm not trying to be a troll. This is the truth, no. I think. Uh, you know, East Coast has always been traditionally the Northeast. Um, final round, Atlanta, that's technically the South, not the, you know. Um, so, Florida... Before 2008, 2009, I believe, not a part of the East Coast. We were our own little state. There was really nothing going on back in the day. I actually used to run tournaments uh, when CBS 2 and Third Strike came out, like free events at the UC University of Central Florida with a few buddies. And then we had a guy by the name of Calm Warrior. I'm not sure if some of you guys know his name. It's David Richardson. I think Triforce knows who's he, who he is. Um, yeah. yeah, when I graduated college and kind of... Uh, started my own business and doing all that stuff. He was doing a lot of events uh, right when the dead ga fighting game era was. So it was always just us, man. I think before 2000, CEO like 2011, the first international players or big players were back in the way back when CBS2 was out was Ricky Ortiz, Arturo Sanchez, Justin Wong. Before CEO came along, nobody outside of Florida ever came to our events. I could be forgetting people, but I'm, I'm talking big names. So until 2009, we were never East Coast. We were just Florida doing our own thing. When I put CEO on the map and a lot of the northern people from the east started coming down, I felt like that was building up most of the East Coast. But in terms of, you know, partnerships with other organizers on the East Coast, uh, at this point, you know, we've always helped. They helped me get my start with CEO. Uh, but I think I'm kind of on my own now. They're doing their own thing with their tech and circuit, all that stuff. So, you know, whether we're, we are we're, we're not a part of East Coast, Everyone's welcome to Florida. That's what's happening. So I'm just going to go with that. Okay. Um, can I? Can I? Can I? Answer, can I give my answer to that question? Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, before Jabeli um, was around, when he was running his tournaments back in those days, but on a, a smaller scale, this is the time when you had East Coast Championships. Um, this is with um, Jet Fee and Henry Sen and and the yep. guys at, at the eight at the break. The South and Atlanta was always, no, well, Atlanta and Florida was always considered South. This is when you had Kenji, KB, Nova, Flash, Metroid, when he was doing his Guilty Gear thing. And the guys from the South came up to East Coast um, Championships. So it was always considered the South from the SRK standpoint. Um, geographically, it is the Southeast. It's, it's on the East Coast because it's on the East, um, the east um, Coast, literally, in the sense. But um, that's just my um, take on it based on what we've known about the um, Florida scene for um, over 10 years. So I'm not saying Jabeli is lying or he's wrong about the situation, but in his, when he looks at it from his standpoint, based on his experience, it was based on what he did in his local scene. But on the, on the grand scale, when they divided the country up into literally four parts, you know, um, Midwest Championships was considered the North, so to speak, along with Seattle, uh, when with Rotron and the rest of those guys. Those, those guys was considered like the North. I don't know why Seattle was considered the North, when it's all the way on the uh, Northwest, but whatever. Then you had um, the West Coast, then you had Final Round, and then you had uh, whatever happened in Florida as considered the South, or when the players came up. And then the Northeast was the Northeast, and that was considered the actual East Coast. New York City, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Boston. That's the actual East Coast. And no, Virginia didn't start anything yet until around pretty much the same time, you know, uh, he mentioned around 2007, 2008 when Florida came into itself. So I just wanted to throw that in there. 
I agree with it. I don't disagree with anything you just said. Okay. Um, I have actually a question coming from the chat. Um, question for Jeff Bailey. Why haven't you branched off and expanded the community to grow stronger in a business sense? Uh, uh, post, I guess, P.S. Uh, VXG does it with ease. So uh, I sent a little bias there, but uh, basically they're asking why haven't you uh, tried to grow or expand as far as uh, maybe outside of Florida or are you content with just Florida? Uh, I mean, there there can be the politically correct way of me answering this. I've actually tried very, very hard, but a lot of people, the problem, it's okay, it is a problem. Just everyone sees things differently. They see how they do events differently, how they organize the events, how they do all that. So I've tried and, you know, still behind the scenes, a lot of people are trying. It's just not different agendas, but everyone has a completely different way of doing things. So in terms of like reaching out, hey, if I had a country giving me a hundred grand for tourism money, of course I would reach out and throw, you know, give qualifiers and all that stuff to everybody. Rolando is doing an amazing job, actually. When I first met the guy, stand-up guy, he actually goes and attends all the other events promoting his event, which is exactly what I did with CEO like the first two years. But, you know, he's fortunate. He has a whole entire country backing the guy. If I had that kind of money, of course I would reach out, but CEO is privately run. I'm actually like broke right now planning it out. Everything comes out of my pocket. So to work together, just everyone has to be on the same page. The only problem is there's no complete total leadership. Uh, I, you know, and whatever you guys said a couple weeks ago that I'm, I'm essing uh, Evo's, you know, I don't like to curse. That's just not my style. Um, you know, all that stuff. I'm just working with uh, people that I trust that do an amazing job putting on an event. Why wouldn't I want to work with them? So uh, Let me interject right there because it is about to go down right now. Uh, yeah, First, yeah. Yes. Say I, I, I all you want because what I'm about to say is that real spit, the real talk. Jabili, true or false? And you answering this question is going to go into it. Did you not reach out to me three and a half years ago to get an understanding of this scene in which you wanted to develop from Orlando? True or false? True, because I like to reach out to everybody and see where everyone stands. So true, yes. Okay. okay. Now, when you reached out to me and we had our discussion about the South Florida and what you wanted to do to make up for Manny Camacho and all that crap that happened and him <laughs> going to jail or whatever the fuck happened. He had cancer or someone put a gun to his head, whatever the case may be. Didn't I explain to you that the problem with this country is that for the most part in the scene, you can't trust anybody. True or false? True. Okay. Now, I spoke to you and I told you specifically why you can't trust anyone. And I told you that they are not here for the scene. They do not want to develop the scene. They want to control the scene so that they can get their money. So the part where you're saying, well, people have different agendas, or you don't want to say that people get in agendas, I think you're being kind of a bitch about the situation. You should just call it for what it is. It's not that they're they have their different things and they want to approach. Motherfuckers don't want to work together. And that's just really what it is. They want to run their own shit. You, are, you yourself are in danger of that. Which, just to let you know, last year when y'all put out, well, actually, let me not blame you because you are not the director of it. When that faggot Calvin Theobo pulled out that trash gamer shit at, the, at CEO to try to make me look bad like I was trying to get back Justin Wong using old footage and cutting it up together just to try to I don't know what the hell that, the purpose of that was we reached out to you anyway VXG called you I was in the room with Rolando after VXG ended and I told him next year because he asked me he's like now that VXG is done and we're going into 2013 we're the new guys on the block and we want to we want to penetrate the North American um, market and try to localize our brand there and get in there. But we do not want to conflict with any of the tournaments there or get in anyone's way. And he asked me, who are some of the people I should work with to make that happen? I am the person that referred you Why Rolando called you. And we wanted to work something out with you. 
but you gave us the pompous ass, eh, I don't know, you, you shouldn't really fuck with Evo, blah, blah, blah. When we was like, well, we're not really trying to fuck with Evo, we'll call Evo and ask them when their dates was, that Mr. Wizard gave us another <laughs> answer oh well we don't give out our dates because of blah 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 we're like what we, we just want to know what your dates are so we don't plan on your date which obviously you saw later on we actually end up planning on the same day that we had to move our date because of the stupidness now we have all this politics but the truth and the reality is is that outside of big e larry john and long island joe this is the first time ever a group of organizers has come together for the benefit of the scene. And that's just real rap. And next year, I'm telling you right now, online, on the On Blast show, I don't care who's listening. You are in danger next year. Danger. I, real danger next year. Why? Because VXG is going to be in July. The quality of these tournaments has nothing to do with the manpower that's going to tournaments anymore. Now it's about the quality of what your events being run. That was some good shit this year that you, the last year that you did with CEO, putting the whole wrestling ring in there. I commend you for that. You're still a faggot in my eyes for a lot of dumb shit that you say about me behind my back for no reason. But in terms of your ability to run your events, in terms of your skill as an actual competitor, you can't deny how good you are in those things. But in 2014, when VXG is done, and I'm telling you right now, VXG will be the greatest event in fighting game history. It is going to set a new standard, a new template. You are going to be caught between East Coast Throwdown, Evolution, and then the Aftermath, which is VXG. VXG will have no problems because it will always be an Aftermath situation. And when these assholes no longer see you as a ally to their cause i wonder what you're gonna do so i tell you what i'm telling you now on the on blast show while you have time on behalf of Rolando, we once again extend our hand to you now 2013 for you to become a vxg qualifier for 2014 don't even give me an answer sleep on it just putting that out there I'm not worried, man, because my events can only get bigger and better until 2020. But, uh, but Triforce, in your defense, I agree with you. VXG is making big moves. I never specifically said don't compete with Evo. I said it's a bad idea to be even doing it on the same month when you're trying to do big things. People, and this isn't against Rolando because I talk to Rolando a lot. He, anytime he asks me for advice, I give him straight, honest answers, and I'm sure he will tell you the truth. That that is what I do. Nobody knows his event as an event yet. I don't care if you throw a million dollars across the world. Look at Revelations. That guy pretended to throw money everywhere and look at the end result of that, okay? Not saying Rolando doesn't have the money. He obviously does. Yeah, I, I, mean, he's, you, I mean, he does have the backing of a country. Right. And this isn't, this isn't questioning that. It's the fact that nobody knows this event. The only people that are going as we speak are the top players that are being flown out there, okay? What Rolando has to do, and it doesn't happen overnight, is to do a successful event for everybody, not just the Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, because here's where we have a difference on views for things. Okay. When you say, when you, when you say Rolando's tournament is not known to everyone, who's target audience are you talking about because i'm going to let you know right now outside of the obvious where we're trying to do our best to look which is why they partnered with empire to help localize their brand in the northeast to get the people in the fighting game community that is actually not true marketing do you know why because the gamers are going to come regardless the actual physical numbers of the gamers being in the building competing is actually irrelevant. That is an old, tired um, strategy that's been used over and over again. You need real exposure, real reach, real marketing. It can only be done on a mainstream level. Complex Media put out an article about VXG. That complex reaches millions of people who do not know about the fighting community. The fighting community is a speck of dust 
in esports. It only has what? 33,000 people, and that's virtually. If we're looking at it from a, a standpoint of how many actual people in a fighting game community will go to an actual tournament and line up, it is less than 10,000, which is dog shit. And, and no one cares about it. This is why no major company in America wants to come in and back it, because your numbers are ass. The reason why the number, the reason why Rolando can get his country to back him when America can't even get billion dollar companies to back it is because Rolando. Oh, has sh I got Microsoft sponsoring this year. Carry on. Okay, good shit. I respect that. But the but the point I'm trying to say is, Rolando markets to the mainstream. He wants people to understand VXG is not just a video game tournament. It is a gaming experience. He has to convince the Minister of Education, the Minister of Tourism, the Minister of Culture, and this entire island's in, entire political infrastructure that video, technology through video games is the new way of everything on the planet. And that is why his country's backing him. You, it's so hard to get that shit done in America, which makes no sense. Korea's ahead of us. Japan's ahead of us. China's getting ahead of us. Other countries are getting ahead of America at, for some boneheaded... Bur yeah, I don't even understand why the fuck that is even happening. But when you look at this and no one knows about VXG, you mean no one in the fighting game community for them in, in the grand scheme of in things. The, right, in, the, in, the, in the states... I'm saying the same five, six thousand people that go to Evo, that casual fan base, is not going to yeah. plan to go to VXG until a few years from now when they see what it's. But, but, uh, now, but guess what? Rolando is not aiming for them. He never was. That's why when you told him you shouldn't go against Evo, he's like, what are you talking about? He doesn't care about that market. Not in the sense like he doesn't care, care like fuck those guys. He doesn't. That's not what I mean by that. He. His focus is not them. They are going to find out one way or another, and they're going to make up their mind whether they want to come or not. His thing is to get mainstream people to see what how competitive gaming can entertain people and come out. That's why he has a casino backing him. That's why he has a government backing him. That's why he has tourism backing him. We are talking to big million dollar companies like how you're talking to Microsoft, which is good, but I already told you, you should go to Disney. Nothing against Microsoft, but they can only help you but so far in terms of the Xbox, but you should go to Disney. Go to Disney and tell them, listen, I've been running CEO, look what we've been doing with it, blah, 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 blah. I have a connection, a guy called Todd Rogers, he's in Florida. He knows people who actually do wrestling. Go get wrestling promoters, get connected to Vince McMahon, go to Disney, let those real guys help you and turn video games into a digital competitive entertainment entity. That is what you need to, that is where video games is going. That's why you have IPL, that's why you have DreamHack, that's why you have MLG, that's why all those big dogs are where they are and they are making millions. While the fighting game community is still stuck here trying to run a fucking Chinatown Fear tournament in a fucking hotel. And they say, oh well, this year we got 2,000 people, so we're definitely growing. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? MLG had 20,000 people last year in their tournament. We were over here jumping for joy because we had 5,000 in EVO and we've been running evolution for like almost 15 years like this is not real growth companies laugh at that shit they're like who the fuck is these guys doing I yo mean, i mean hold on triforce let me let me let me get in here now one of the things you know as far as you know after my our interaction uh on twitter where you know again i will publicly say i took it to a level of stupidity um uh, you know, when we were talking about the donation thing, which is something maybe we could touch on a little later. Um, you know, I had taken a 10-year hiatus in this community. Um, when I had left this community, it literally, the competitive scene was me, you, Triforce, Natus, and a couple other motherfuckers meeting up in an arcade in Chicago and everybody putting 50 bucks in and having buy it buybacks to buy back in if you got knocked out just to increase the growth. That was the tournament scene. When I had come back, uh, I had started to see, you know, uh, L.I. Joe and Sweet Johnny Cage actually, uh, East Coast Throwdown was the first event I attended. And my mind was blown away. Um, you know, I said, wow, look at, you know, how much this has changed. 
And then I looked at it as I've gone through the, the last two years looking at the scene. And I'm going, there is no growth. And then I look at MLJ who comes along. And we all know about my, you know, telling them to suck my dick too. Um, and, and, and blowing it up. And it wasn't that I was against MLG per se. Uh, they have the right formula. I just don't believe they have the right people. Now, that's an opinion. Um, okay. But, but I agree with that. <clears throat> you know, now, the growth that they're showing for, I mean, even though I don't, did the last one just happen? I think it was another Dallas one or the, where it was League no, of Dallas, Legends. Dallas is coming up. All right, Dallas is coming Dallas. up. And, yeah. you know, I love the Mortal Kombat community, even when they disown me. Um, but, uh, you know, I got to say, the level of stupidity of people that are out there that still think, oh, well, no, they're going to announce it. They're going to announce, they're going to announce MK9 soon. They're not going to, you know. And it wasn't Mortal Kombat 9's fault that the community uh, got pulled out from... Uh, from MLG, it was you need more than one fighter to have a fighting game division. It was um, a whole fighting game scene. The Soul Calibur, KOF, and, and Mortal Kombat combined. It's the, it's, it's the entire fault of that scene. But, but at what, the end of the and I don't mean to cut you, but at the end of the day, James, the the fighting games was a side event. It doesn't matter to them. No, they it just was, it was it was it was a fifteen minute commercial. If it made a couple of bucks, cool. If not, oh well. It was like watching an infomercial, and it was they tested the water for it, and they didn't. Mm -hmm. They they obviously said let's go in a different direction. I don't condemn them for it, but now the fighting game community as a whole needs to, you know, as Triforce says, get the dicks out of your asses and step up. If you want this thing to grow, I mean, you know, I I I wholeheartedly believe. That, that Jeb Bailey wants his scene to do good. Yes, you want to make money, and I don't give a shit, and it's none of my business how much money you make. You can make $50,000 or $50 on a tournament. It ain't none of my business, nor should somebody care what you make. But well, Jebe, uh, no, uh, James, if Jeb, this whole shit, this money thing, if, if people, people have this money thing twisted. If Jabali does not make money, why do it? Jabali cannot expand his scene. That is not an opinion. It is a fact. And the entire community of little kids need to understand this. At the end of the day, in the grand scheme of things, in the ultimate end, if you want this scene to expand, you need to make money. Period. Money. Money is the god of this shit. Period. It is the, the highest tier that can ever be selected. If you're not getting money, you're not doing shit. If you look at Empire, Empire is weak in terms of its business game because its money game is not on the level of Jabali's. But and that's how you tell whose organization is doing better. Now, if you talk about whose brand is winning, like okay, so what? Empire Cadia wins a lot, but where's its money game? And that's why people shit on the Empire because it wins a lot, yes, but its money doesn't show much for the organization. So if people can understand that logic, how come they can't accept when people are making money off of this shit? And why do they accept, like the idiots who come on Twitch TV and they do dumb shit like, um, they put ad blocks on your shit. Do you think you're helping the scene by putting ad blocks on your Twitch account? The purpose of the ads there is so that Twitch TV can help expand media in gaming. By getting anyone who supports Adblock on Twitch is actually going against what the service Twitch is providing you. Because people are freaking stupid. Which is why you have subscriptions to channels. Now you get these little signs and stuff. They have to find other ways of making money because you're gouging them from making the money the traditional way that they're, that they're marketing to companies. Hey, listen, we have this stream here and this stream is getting all this amount of um, views. It's making more views than Fox TV, Comedy Central, MTV, and whatnot. And we, you can advertise for far cheaper. 
Then they come to the person who's running the stream and say, hey, listen, we have advertising companies that want to run their advertisements on your website and blah, blah, blah. You get a certain amount of people, blah, blah, blah. You can become a Twitch TV partner. You get some subscribers and we'll start paying you um, revenue share from what we're getting from the advertiser. Oh, yes. A a economic structure is being built. The companies are making money and the, the, the people in the game see the creator money. Nah, man, I don't want that. I'm going to put an ad block. What? Fucking idiots. Like, this is how the whole scene is. The whole scene is ass backwards. It, they, for some reason, they're just ass backwards. They don't want it to grow and the, and the whole nine yard. And sooner or later, Jabali, this scene will betray you. This shit is not some bullshit ass messianic delusion that Triforce is saying. Everybody gets it, like they say in New York. Everyone gets it. And sooner or later, these same people you think that's on your side, they're going to betray you. The only reason why I am your enemy is because you know, I know that you talk shit about me and it reaches me. And I'm like, why is this guy talking shit about me when I actually helped this guy when he started? Which I never understood, Jabali. Why do shit you talk about shit everyone, about me? Man, get over it. Sorry. <laughs> but I never. No, 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 no. You trolling is one thing. I can understand you. Troll. I watch you troll everyone. You don't troll Jabali. When you troll me on Twitter, that's A. I'm like, uh, whatever, Jabili's always trolling me on Twitter. It's the <laughs> shit you say in, 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 in confidence with other people. Those people come and tell me, Jabili. Well, of Those course, people dude come is going to tell you me. stuff. He's a 15 year old. No, actually, <laughs> actually, actually, in his defense, it ain't even do. The only thing do ever said to me was that you were entertaining him with an offer. That's it. He never said you ever, he never described to me anything that you said about me in detail. It's other people, because, which is the point I'm trying to tell you. You can't trust anybody. These people you see sitting around you smiling with you, they're not your friends. They're not your fucking friends. I mean, I'll say At this. Look, day, listen, listen, hold on, Triforce. At the end of the day, you know, what I was hitting on earlier is, you know, when I had returned to this scene, you know, nothing has changed. And I will agree with Triforce in this aspect. Um, you know, I was writing books. I was developing games. And on that side of the scene, they will fuck you in any way they can. And I've reached out to particular people this last two weeks and have sat down with players and said, you know, I know you're doing this. Let me tell you what I got when I did the deal. I want to make sure you're getting, quote, unquote, your fair share um, because, you know, everybody pisses in the pot and everybody pulls a piece out in the process. And the person that puts in all the legwork is usually the one that winds up getting fucked the hardest. And, you know, I haven't been to you, one of your events. You know, I meant to come down to Cinco de Mayo being that it was my birthday. But, you know, work kind of prevented it. Um, but uh, this year I will be coming down. And, you know, uh, you know, I've heard nothing but positive things about your event. But I do, you know, I know you have the experience. But I will say this. Triforce is not wrong. And, you know, you obviously have some business savvy yourself. You know what it is probably to fuck somebody and to be fucked. And, and if you think that this, this scene is a, a scene of loyalty, it is no different than a bunch of gangs in New York. I feel like when I watch the tournament organizers and the Evos and the CEOs and the Big E's I, and, and, you know, the, the, the Keats, I, I feel like I'm in that movie The Warriors. And everybody got their own little gang and they're trying to figure out how to take over the other person's shit. Um, but do it in a way of a conniver. Not, you know, but under the guise of, oh, we're trying to, we're trying to unite everything. You know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to make money. The community is what suffers. You know, the community is what's suffering from all the bickering that's been going on between TOs and and, and, and and Evo points. I mean, let's be real. And I and I said to you, I'm not gonna put you in any situations to put like Evo on the spot or nothing. You know, um, the only way I can describe it is Evo threw a nigger a bone by giving those Evo points to Biggie. You know, it went from 
no. And then everybody's screaming and yelling on Twitter, James MK, shut up, stop pissing and moaning. Hey, look, I don't even get a freaking Evo point, so I don't care. So my whole gripe was, how do you have a whole coast not get Evo points? And all of a sudden, enough griping goes on. And, oh yeah, by the way, dun, 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 cool commercial comes on and they slam WB getting Evo points. And I'm glad they did that. But for me... What the fuck happened? Why did it have to go to that point for something like that to happen? And that's where the dysfunctionality of this community from the higher-ups, you know, if the higher-ups can't get along, how do you expect the people that are coming to the tournaments to act, you know, quote-unquote, civil? You know, the tournament organizers have to all be on the same page. There's enough room for everybody to make money. You know, at the end of the more, day, more than enough. There's, there's plenty. More than enough. As far as, you know, tournaments being close on dates, okay, look, you know, well, let's all be real here. MLG, I, I, like I said, I got no beef against you. It was just ironic that every time the, uh, the that both of them, you know, that the, a, a major was coming up, all of a sudden an MLG event came up within a week of it on the other side of the country. And that's going to happen again this year. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, but there's no fighting games. Yeah, which doesn't worry me. So. so now there's no there's no conflict. They could hold it, you know, they can hold it on every day that there's a tournament, they can turn around and they can they can have one of theirs. It don't matter. You know, unless somebody in, in the the FGC decides to say, Hey, let's let's start getting into League of Legends or, or StarCraft or Call of Duty, which hey, if the people demand it, you know, if I was if I was a TO, I'd give it. But, you know, the fact of the matter is we are the FGC. As long as they are not doing it now, there should never be a conflict. Um, as far as the VXG and EVO issue, I mean, I, had n I have no game from VXG. I have no game from EVO. In fact, I was told in private that, you know, when I was screaming, ranting, and raving on Twitter, Mr. Wiz is going, who the fuck is this guy? So I'm so ins insignificant in his eyes, which is fine. I don't expect to be. I mean, I was I probably... I was when you picked on Perfect Legend. That's how I first found out about you. It wasn't picking. <laughs> it wasn't picking. And a diva is a diva. I mean, you can't... I, I love PL, but, you know, you got to... I got to call a spade a spade. It sounds racist, but oh well. Um <laughs> But, you know, PL's a great guy, but, you know, he's got his diva mentalities, and he hasn't changed. But, you know, the whole point of that was an entertainment aspect. And this is where you come in, where I say, like, when you did the ring thing and the intros, I was like, wow, you know what? Somebody's finally getting it. Somebody's finally getting to the point that they say, hey, look, gaming is not enough. If you want to bring in a broader audience, you have to almost give that, I don't want to say carny, but Lollapalooza Woodstock feel to these events. You got to have people that turn around and come back and say, wow, you know what? I suck at Street Fighter. I came in 100th out of 80 players. But you know what? I walked away from that event. I got to see, you know, whatever. I got to meet, you know, Mortal Kombat characters, or you know, I got to uh, meet the designers of, of of a Capcom game, or I won a couple of free joysticks in a raffle, or I saw a band, or man, this guy put on this show in a ring. There has to be more. The more you bring to the table, the more people you will bring. You know, I hear people say, well, I got, I, I see it on Twitter all the time, I got fans. No, you don't have fucking fans. You got other players that admire the way you play. They're not fans. They don't got your baseball card, and if they see you, they don't go, oh, my God, let me get your autograph. Some do, but, you know, it's, it's to the level where this community's got to really get off its ego high horse if it wants to grow. And I will say, like I said... When you did the ring thing, I was like, wow, somebody's finally getting that was, it. Yeah, there was the, the ring thing was actually godlike. You know, and, and well, here's the thing. I'll be honest with you. The ring thing, because I'm a fan of wrestling, Evo, Evo doesn't need gimmicks. I needed a gimmick to make, make people notice. Whoa. Whoa. But see, here's the Whoa. thing. It's not Whoa. a gimmick. 
That, thank you, James. It's not, not a, a gimmick. gimmick. It's you giving. Now, look, I'm sorry. I'm going to put Evo on Little Blast. In my opinion, you do more for the community than Evo. I don't care if they get 50,000 people down there. They take your money. They give you a free shirt. They put you in a tournament. They let you go piss money away in a casino, get drunk like a skunk, maybe bang abroad and go home. I could do that here in New York for a lot cheaper. But what you're bringing to the table is you're offering more to the community and more to the players. You know, it, it's not a gimmick. I played the fifth on this one. I can't answer. Now you don't know, see that's that bitch shit. Don't don't bitch up like that. Your experience package is better, and that's what I was saying. This is all going to change next year because it is no longer about how many people you're going to get to a tournament. The tournaments now, in terms of eyes, are now virtual. It's all about the virtual eyes. And Evo is Evo. Evo is big working on a tradition, a niche, a gimmick, whatever you want to call it. That it is now the World Fighting Game Championships. So because it has solidified itself that way, Evo does not have to do anything extra for them to get their views. So now they're putting the other majors in a particular situation where you're going to have to step your shit up or it's just not going to run. If you look at if you look at SoCal regionals, right? Look at SoCal regionals. Look at the production quality Phenomenal. of their street. It was ridiculous. That should have happened two and a half years ago. All right. It's late. Better late than never. But that is the standard of quality. This is now where jobs come in. This is how the whole economical, economic structure comes in. No offense against Spooky, but streams now, people who are, in, who are doing streams in your house, Bum, uh, Peaceful J, any, and all these other people out there, you have Jaxel and you guys are getting streams. These guys need to be hired so that they can, that they can be able to bring their ability to these tournaments. Not one particular guy traveling all around the country doing a stream for every single thing. It, this shit needs to be branched out and networked. And the streamers should be paid for this. Fuck this hotel and a motherfucking airfare. Hey, get the fuck out of here. Motherfuckers is bringing in 60 Gs per event off a venue. Come on. Give a... Yo, break up. Break someone off a five grand and say, come and stream my shit. Vine is one of the best businessmen in the scene. He starts at 10K. You what? Level up? You need 10K. You cannot, you cannot come to that man and, and look him in his face. That's an OG looking at you like, you really going to throw all of that shit in my face and think that it's going to rock like that? Get the fuck out of here. Guys like Bifu Techie, rising streamer. He is coming to stream an event called Carnival and, no, not Carnival, a Heineken Regatta. Google it. Google it. That's where his, his streaming for BXG has propelled him to that. Spooky shouldn't be streaming shit in the fighting game community alone anymore. Spooky should have been gone into some fucking eSport. Go stream dream hacking shit and get paid 20k for it. What the fuck are you still doing here? Doing bullshit ass promos for fucking seating points and fucking, what, well, fucking t-shirts? Get the fuck out of here. This scene is so ass. Oh my fucking God, this shit is ass. Same thing for you, Chabelli. Stop hiring Northeast help or West Coast help. Find somebody in Orlando. Do you know how to stream? Yes. I do have one. He does my second mainstream, so I'm building into that Triforce, so... Okay, no, I, awesome. I, I, stand correct. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. And that's okay. good to see. And that's We're, fine. Also, I like to talk. I like to talk. also, man, I don't know where somebody gave you a number that I made 50K from CEO. I freaking wish I, I no, did. I no, I, 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 I just threw a number out. It wasn't, uh, I wasn't saying you made 50K. That's just a number I threw I out. Because I paid people. I paid Spooky. I, 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 you know, I don't make that much. I really don't. And I put it, the ring, that was my own pocket. That was my paycheck going into a wrestling ring. So I put into it, but there's still, I mean, you, you, and I, I can agree with you that there isn't enough money to go around in the FGC, but a lot of us don't do it for the money. We, some of us deserve it. I'm not going to lie. Most of us deserve it that put on these events because we, we put blood, sweat, and tears every single day. This whole time I'm trying to figure out how to sell a freaking t-shirt on my CEO website and build a registration page from scratch. I mean, like, I put, every day put sweat and tears into it. 
the money's just not there yet, man, because we don't have those big sponsors. But I think it's finally coming. You guys just have to keep being patient. And if it doesn't come in the next two years, then fine. Let VXG and all these other tournaments put to shame. It is already here. You know that. You don't need to bullshit the people in the stream. It is already here, which you're going to see a lot of consolidations in the fighting game community because some people just don't got it. And at, at the end of the day, which, is, which leaves the question, where will you be? But you say you got Microsoft, you got Disney around the corner, so I think you'll be okay. But and I'm also catering to the same people that go to EVO and the other events. I'm not worried about the big picture. I'm doing this for the fun of the community, so I have no reason to worry about failing. Like you said, VXG doesn't care about the people that are coming, which isn't true. Of course they care. But no, I, 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 I corrected that statement. I told you it's not that they don't care. It's to, in order for them to do for the little people, they have to do for the big. You, can't, you cannot depend – when you're creating an infrastructure of anything, you cannot depend on a weak resource. You have to support the weak resource. You go to the strong resources and you take from that and you come down and you give it to the weaker resources. You, that's why the community takes took so freaking long to build because they're like, okay, let's go down to the little people and ask them for their money to help develop the scene. That's why it took so long. We're supposed to be going to the big dogs, creating real marketing proposals and showing the big dogs, listen, if you do some long-term investment, yada, 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 this is how you, MLG did it. MLG came into the fighting game community, took Tekken, <laughs> oh my God, that shit was disgusting. They took Tekken, they took Street Fighter at Evo, they took that shit, put that shit, wrapped that shit up in a nice little present, put a motherfucking bow tie on it, and went and sold it to some executive in New York. And they was like, oh, okay, so I see what you need. And they said, here. And now look where they are. That's what I'm talking about. I understand you're doing it for the community, but Jabali, let us cut this bullshit ass benevolent facade. Stop it. You're not going to help this scene grow any faster with this nonsense. I understand your love. I love the scene too, although I hate the scene as well at the same time. <laughs> but in order for it to grow, you have to do business. That's why when we when me and Rolanda had this little joke, we was like we, we saw your page, your thing where you put Jabali was in the, a newspaper or some magazine for doing a good business sense. And I'm like, you know what's so funny about it? If that magazine company understood the actual esports market, they wouldn't put you in the magazine. So that because hurts, man. That hurts. But the reality is compared to esports, you ain't shit. And you I need don't to, care. I don't need to be shit. You need to. If you want no, to seem to grow. No, wait, 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 Triforce. Now let and me, let me, let me. Well, I'm going to get unleashed, mother effers, okay? You listen here, what? Triforce. I've tried to do business with other organizers. People don't like to listen to me when I tell them the truth of how to improve shit, and that's why shit doesn't work out because some people don't want to listen because they got egos, and, they, and they're the ones that are the ones holding us back. I love oh, that. Oh, shit. I, A little truth from Jabili. I think we're getting through him. Holy oh, shit. shit. Holy dog shit, ladies and gentlemen. We got a little bit of truth out of him. All right, Here calm go. down. Continue. Continue. No, I'm, I'm just going to say, the reason why I'm diplomatic now is because I've opened my big mouth, I've spoken the truth, and people go, who the F are you, Jabali? Shut up. You're just this new guy. I go, fine. I'll just keep impressing people, showing uh, what I can do with my own event, let my event speak for itself, work with Evo, work with Keats, work with the people that want to work together. And everyone else, they, I, I wish them the best of success. Let them do what they want to do. But I've spoken about how to improve shit. I've shown people what CEO can do in less than two years of growth, okay? If people don't want to take my advice and think I'm just some snot-nosed little shit from Florida, that's fine by me. But I've tried, man, and I'm not going to keep trying because I've tried. It didn't work. I'm just going to keep working with the people that do support me and take it from there. I mean, I, I, I mean honestly, I could say that's that's... You know, not, you know, I'm not, you know, I joke around that I am, I'm the Illuminati's Illuminati. And I know a lot, you know, and I will say this to the whole stream. I know a lot of the dirt that goes on behind doors. I mean, I, you know, I'm like the TMZ of the MK community, you know, I, I, or, or should I say the FGC. I know the little, the little sob stories and the, and the backdoor deals that go on and I shut my mouth. I just let things unfold, and I will say this, 
you know, the fact that you run good events and the fact that you're saying, I just let it, you know, I, you know, people just don't want to listen. To me, what that sounds like is you're tired of trying to grow the scene, that you're happy with your private Idaho. Um, and the problem with that is everybody else don't give a fuck about you. And that's the reality of it. And if in the process you get crushed, which it ain't good. When I say crushed, I don't mean crushed. But when you get backed into a corner, you are going to be sitting there going, you know, I try to, to do everything diplomatically. And diplomacy, unfortunately, is not going to work. Because of the fact that everybody's growing, everybody's going in these different directions, you know, it's such a clusterfuck in a nutshell, you know, with, you know, IPL, Evo, the East Coast, the West Coast, you know, um, you know, I, one of the things, you know, and it's kind of a spin off on all this for a second, why the fuck are tournaments flying in? Like all these, eight, all these international players, you know, if you come to a world tournament, it's on your own fucking buck. That's not a. You Can know, I make something clear real quick? Go ahead. Can I make something clear? Uh, how do I say this? Okay, CO two thousand eleven. I with the the help of um, a traveling circus, we split the cost to bring Tokido and Gamer B because nobody knew what CO was. And I wanted to show people from out of the country what it's capable of, okay? I did that. I spent my own money to bring these players out, which I do agree, you shouldn't have to. But when you're first coming into it, you should do this. VXG is doing it, flying out some of these top players to help advertise the event. Because when people see these big players are coming, they do it. I made CEO such a success the following year, not since the Evo prior, uh, the year before, Daigo came to my event. People thought, even Spooky's like, Jabali, how much did you pay for Dido to come? Like, not a penny. He's like, come on, man. You know Spooky's voice, and I love Spooky. He's like, come on. I'm like, dude, not a single penny. Mad Cats is a sponsor. Mad Cats gladly brought him out. Markman helped him get out here. All those players came on their own because I threw a solid event. I focused on making the event the best it could be. So I do agree you shouldn't be paying for top players. And look at SCR. Had the most views outside of EVO. Only infiltration came. He didn't pay for any players. And that shows that America now, because everyone knows how good America is, and we can keep up with the Japanese and Street Fighter outside of Evo. Obviously, that's a bit different. But all our local events, we always go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the end. Justin Wong won CEO last year, beating Daigo, everyone. Okay, so now it is different. We don't have to pay for all those players to come out to our events. But if you don't have a solid event, people don't see that, then nobody's going to come in general. Jabeli, when I, I, I can you speak I, up, Triforce? I can barely hear you. Oh, sorry. I think I can um, say this on uh, MK James, James MK's behalf. When he meant flying out international um, 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 competition, he didn't mean the people who were starting out. He meant the pep, the people that were already established. Yeah, already. I mean, it, it's it goes on. You know, I mean, hey, look, Apex is a great event. I I went to this event and and like I said I am not a Smash fan by by you know by no means I ain't bashing the game I just did. it's it's not my cup of tea but are you telling me that well, it looked like there was about ten Japanese top Japanese players that they flew out on their own buck I mean maybe there was donation drives maybe there was some but the point is is these events that are established. Um, at this point and at this day and age, those players should want to come, you know, to these events on their own buck. They see how good an event is. Because now a lot, there's a lot of spot. I mean, I'm not going to get into this whole debate. I want Triforce to go off with all the provisions and what teams pay for who because everyone already knows all that. But now there are a lot of sponsors going around sending their players to all the best well-run events. That's how it's happening now. So... You know, you just you do a great event, people are going to show up now. That's just how it is. Yeah, that's true. There's no disagreement with that. Well, I mean, what? Let, let me ask you this: What do you think the end game is? Now, we bro, we we briefly, we briefly spoke earlier today, and you know, I had said that this community has to unite. 
uh, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, tournament organizers at, at are, are, are basically at the helm of what the community is going to do. Um, the separation of fighting games in general. Do you think that this can actually ever unite, or do you think that the egos are of such immense proportions that, you know, it's just the community will never unite? Because that is the only way this scene will grow. I mean, but people like play. I mean, that's a totally loaded question because certain people like to play certain games. They don't like to play Street Fighter. They don't like to play Mortal Kombat. Those communities have no reason to like actually unite because they're separate communities. I feel. I believe that a lot of players have reached out within other communities, but I think that's amongst top players. A lot of people that stay at home. You're right. They they always hold it back and they bash other communities. I mean, I pick on Smash all the way to hell, but I love Smash. I used to play Smash. It's just the community that I've had my issues with. So uh, end game. It's just keep supporting the games you love and hope that game grows. Because if if you like the wrong game, there's nothing wrong with playing what you enjoy. But there's no reason for like a Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter tournament to be. Uh, uh, you know, I can't really explain that question. That's a that's a hard question to answer. I mean, it's like, like you know, where I disagree with you is, you know, there's 50 states in the United States. At the end of the day, it's the United States, which is comprised of all 50 that make it the United States. The fighting game community, you know, is, you know, and, and this is where I think a lot of people uh, misinterpret what the fighting game community is. It is any game. I don't care if it's if it's Persona, if it's if it's you know an anime game, if it's a if it's a, a, a melee melee game, MK, a Capcom game, um, an Atlas game, KOF, any any game, it's part of the community, and the community as a whole has to accept that. You know, I get sick and tired of hearing people bitch about Mortal Kombat. You know, saying oh it's broken. Well, guess what, motherfucker? There ain't a game out there that's not broken. You know, it, you know. So for somebody to turn around and say, oh, "Calm down, son. Dive kick's not broken. That's a very balanced." Oh, game. well, okay. Well, dive kick. Okay. Oh, I mean, if, if we simplify everything to a dive kick, a jumping kick, then we're good to go. You know, but I, I'm sure somewhere along the line, somebody will find something broken in it. You know, it's, uh, every game has its issues. There's no, there's absolutely no reason to believe otherwise. You know, and with that said, you know, it's got you know the the community you know and when i say the community i don't care if it's marvel capcom you know street fighter mortal kombat kof soul caliber whatever the hell the game is injustice which will be dropping uh in what a month and a half um april 19th which will also be hosted at ceo 2013 on june 20th to 30th in orlando florida carry on <laughs> um you know it's it's I'm actually putting my eggs in the basket on Injustice, that it actually might be a game that finally starts to unify some of the players. Um, it offers something to Street Fighter, it offers something to Marvel, it offers something to MK. Um, is it going to win the anime crowd over? Maybe not. But at least I think it will bridge a gap. And now I know there's a lot of Capcom people in this stream that are probably like, no, fuck that, anything Ed Boon does is probably broken, da 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 you know, I've heard it all for 20 years. Um, but I will say this. When they made this game, uh, they not only talked to the Mortal Kombat community, they dealt with the street fight, you know, members of the top players in the Street Fighter community and the Marvel community, and they, they listened. You know, um, I don't know how far Capcom listens to the players. Uh, or the new, uh, I, I know you think they don't. But no, I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying I don't know the level that they listen to. Well, uh, let me put it this way. Cross Tech in 2013 would not have happened if it wasn't for the community talking and Capcom listening. I'm not trying to, you know, be a suck up to Capcom, but I believe they listen more than anybody else uh, to the community. I mean, not saying they do it more than, you know, uh, NetherRealm no, students. No, but they listen. But they, they listen. In a nutshell, they do listen. I, do, I, didn't, I didn't think they didn't listen. Um... But I mean, it's it's KOF community didn't listen because they never improved the online. Carry on. Yes. Well, I mean, online is not. <laughs> honestly, I can tell you this. You know, any. I mean, yeah, I've heard Tekken Online is probably the best one out there. 
Uh, would you agree with that, I guess? Uh, you know what? I do play every single fighting game online to test it. And the last two, three years, I think Soul Calibur Five honestly had the best online. Um, and then I forgot. It's been a while since I talked about that. But, yeah, no, Namco's done an amazing job uh, with their games. But Street Fighter Four, man, I still think is one of the most playable. The reason why I think Street Fighter Four kicked off the scene is so successful because the online was easy. That's why I'm. That's pretty much the only fighting game I'm really good at now. It's because I can come home, play that shit for an hour, learn, learn matchups, get good, and be good to go. You know, a lot of other games are struggling, waiting, stuff like that. But um, uh, the Namco games are doing great with online. So yeah, but that's a whole other debate. Now, Smedwick, James, hold on, James. Smedwick, hold on, hold on. Smedwick just asked, "What about Skullgirls?" Let me tell you something. Um, I had the utmost. I have utmost respect for the players of the game. But I will say, the man who did the patch for Skullgirls can suck my dick. When I heard what he told Chris G, that after asking him to give an opinion of it and, and give an honest opinion, and Chris G said, well, this don't work and this don't work no more, and the guy turned around and said, well, eh, you can play it or you don't, you don't play it, whatever. Then what was the point of asking? And for me, you know... Being on the development side, for somebody to basically just lackadaisically blow somebody off, um, Skullgirls can suck my dick. Not the players, but the, the, the girl, it's the, the girl developer, whatever you want to call this ass clown, he can suck my dick. Um, even, for, even for going to that level, you know, where you don't have a, you don't have a community of, you know, I mean, I'm not getting, once, like, once again, I'm not getting into the donation thing, um, but, you know, it, it's not that big of a scene. I mean, it does have a scene, but to turn around and take one of your top plays, like, hey, play it, you play it, you know, hey, whatever, just shows me a dismissive attitude that, thanks for the money, sucker, and we're done. No, anyway, go ahead, try for us. James, okay, because... Uh, uh, we're, we're, this this is not interesting. Let's 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 turn it up right now for a second. Let's make this interesting. I have a question, which is going to lead into a, a, a an experiment, a real time experiment. <laughs> okay, hold on. Is this going to be a long experiment? Because I have a quick question for you. Okay, I'll let you go first. Okay, how do you? What are your thoughts on the fact that the Nintendo Wii U is the worst system to come out from Nintendo since the Virtual Boy? <laughs> oh, oh man. <sighs> God, damn. That's a tough question. Oh, no, it's a, it's a legitimate question. The Virtual it's Boy was the big. shit. Oh, my hold on, hold on, hold on. That, no, this is, <laughs> a, this is a shot. For the this is a shot I loved, I, shot I loved Red this Mario. Is, this is a shot fired at Nintendo, so I'm about to backslap the shit out of him with an answer. <laughs> All right. You know, every, every first quarter of the year is the worst for sales of any hardware system. It has been that way. It has been that way since the ex inception of consoles. So when they drop Smash Brothers at the end of the year at Christmas and the Wii U goes back up, then you can pull my cock out your mouth and retype that statement. Anyway, moving forward. <clears throat> How many people in here like Injustice? Can I get a one if you like Injustice in the stream? I think nobody can answer that question because it's not even out yet. That's why I don't like to talk about games until they're out. Uh, I've seen a lot of ones. Get, but, yeah, but you've seen yeah, a lot of ones. Okay. I'm interested in it. I think you should ask me. Okay, all right. I'll take the ones as you're interested in it, right? Because there's something you said that I would like to put, put to an experiment. Now, you said you're having this game at CEO, correct? Correct. Okay. Could you, could you put out that promotion one more time? I am having injustice at CEO. The dates? They need to know the dates. On June 28th to 30th in Orlando, Florida. Thank you, Triforce. Okay, so with that being said, I would like to see just how unified this scene is. <laughs> if you all know the answer for this. So, Jabili, you guys you got Evo points, right? Right. No, oh, that's okay. Oh, just wondering. So, we approached you last year, wanted to do a qualifier for VXG. And, you know, due to this weird, wonky situation, Big E's winner bro was able to get not only Evo points, but a VXG qualifier. So I tell you what I'm going to do for you. I will give you two tickets 
for injustice as a qualifier at CEO for BXG. Are you at liberty to take those tickets to help further the community, my brother? I'm not going to answer that right now, but then you know what? For a game that... Uh, yes. I'm not going to answer right now. It has nothing to do with Evo, dude. Here's why I didn't say yes to VXG. I did not know VXG. When I tried to work with a douchebag like Manny Camacho, look what he did to the community. I had to pick up the pieces. When another guy like Revelations came along, look what happened. I, have no, I love Rolando. I just don't know his event as an event yet. I want to see it succeed.